Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. We would like to thank our friends at Premium Bar Products for sponsoring this episode. If you're ready to step up your game at your home bar, check out premiumbarproducts.com to choose from their wide selection of glassware, all of which can be custom engraved with your personal message or logo. And there's no minimum order. So after the episode, head over to premiumbarproducts.com and check out everything they have to offer. Now, let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Shannon. And I'm Mike Hyatt. And this is The Bourbon Road. And Mike, we are on The Bourbon Road, are we not? We are. We traveled about an hour and 20 minutes south of our house. A nice country drive. We kind of took a, some back roads, didn't we? I, it, you know, I'm so glad we drove those roads and didn't take the interstate. Absolutely beautiful. So we're, I guess we're in southern Nelson County? You are indeed. Beautiful country roads, winding hills, passing rick houses along the way. Yeah, we're down in uh, New Haven. I was about to say New Haven, Connecticut, but we're in New Haven, <laughs> Kentucky. Yeah. So this is where, this is the home to the Rail, Kentucky Railway Museum, right? Yes, it is. All right. Well, we hear somebody in the background who's sort of answering our questions. Mike, who is it? So we got some Dant family in the house. We're actually in their house. We are at Log Steel Distillery, New Haven, Kentucky, and we got Lynn Dant with us on the Bourbon Road. Lynn, welcome to the Bourbon Road. Thank you very much, guys. Really welcome. nice to be with you, Jim and Mike. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's great. It's a pleasure to have you here. And it's so amazing to walk into a distillery site that is just bustling. I mean, bustling with creativity, bustling with construction, um, and, and an absolutely beautiful architecture. You guys have really got something fantastic going on here. Thank you very much. A lot of a lot of Dant family and good friends have helped us get this far, and we're excited to keep going. All right, so we're going to get straight to the whiskey, Mike. We like to do that, and then we'll talk about the whiskey, and we'll talk about what you have going on here and the and sort of the project your family's in the midst of. But uh, we want to get straight to the whiskey and give somebody something to smack their lips about, right, Mike? Sure. I'm, I'm waiting. I can't wait. All right. So, Lynn, what do we have in our glass? You have here our very first release of Monk's Road Bourbon, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It is um, a high rise similar to the Dant family's history in the business. Uh, we are calling it our Fifth District Series. Uh, Fifth District is a nod back to the Kentucky Tax District that represents this area of Southern Nelson County. Um, our family has a very long history in this area, and one of our main goals with this distillery in general is to give back to this part of the county that has done so much for our family over centuries, literally. And so uh, this particular uh, bourbon, we have Fifth District Cold Spring Distillery, which is named after a distillery that was just a little bit further south here from where we sit in this conference room on D Head Road. All right, so this is a an high rye, mm -hmm. straight Kentucky bourbon. It's a six year old, six year old bourbon. It's got some great color, Mike. Yeah, that nice dark golden amber to it. Um, man, that smells just absolutely delicious. Oh, it doesn't it yet? I'm ready. Don't let me hold you back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I get that definitely. That sweet caramel is just yeah. popping out, right? Um, uh, even a little butterscotch, maybe. A little butterscotch for you. I get a little bit of floral note on this, and that's kind of that's strange for a high rye bourbon, but I get a little bit of floral note. Maybe it's just the spring day and everything's green down here. Yeah, that rye is peeking through, though. And it's not too much. For 100 proof, there's not too much ethanol in the nose. No. All right, I'm ready to taste it. Right. Cheers. 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 That's popping with that butterscotch you were talking about, Jim. Yeah. Man, I'm getting these Pop Rocks a lot lately. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, hey, I tell you what. I can tell this is a high rye. Had that Pop Rocks on the tongue. Slid right back. And I got that old Kentucky hug. Just welcoming <laughs> me to the log steel distillery. How was that finish for you, Mike? 
It, it is a little dry to me, almost not as dry like as a red wine, but a little dry for me. And I, I typically get that out of uh, high rye bourbons a lot for me. Um, and it's weird because whenever you're distilling rye, it's sticky, right? Yeah. Um, but I like it. It's sitting there with me. I still get that. That You always say the buttery popcorn, Jim. Mm-hmm. Kind of get that buttery popcorn, uh, that kettle corn. That's the word I was looking for, okay. kettle corn. All right. I always like that old school kettle corn. Yeah, so not not too sweet up front, <clears throat> but it's balanced really nice with the back of the palate. So I, I don't get this uh, overwhelming sense that the, that the flavors are concentrated more in the front or more in the back. They're kind of well distributed. So a well-balanced whiskey. That second sip. To me, it was excellent. Just a little bit sweeter on that second sip. Uh, that oak is starting to come out. I can see it in that six year. It's working its magic. <laughs> and I can I can tell this is a nice, nice uh, bourbon. Now, Lynn, why Monk's Road? So Monk's Road is the road that you guys drove in on. It's the road that leads to our distillery from a little bit further north. Uh, there's an abbey that sits up the way. That our family has a history with um, my forefathers, Wally's, mine, Charles' forefathers donated a big chunk of property uh, back to the Sisters of Loretta, actually, uh, to, to in order for them to build a, a school for girls back in the, I think, 1800s. And, um, you know, the property has changed hands over the time. But it's it's always led to this area, which is where our distillery is. So Monk's Road's the road you drive on to get here. And it's just kind of a nod back to our history in this area as a family, as well as our you know faith-based traditions. So uh, a lot of our listeners may not really know where southern Nelson County is. So I'm going to try and work on the geography here a little okay. bit. So, so northern Nelson County is... Bardstown. It, right. right. Is where Bardstown is. So we're south of Bardstown, about 10 miles or so. Probably about, yeah, 10 to 15, a little to slightly 15. west, southwest. And then to our west mm-hmm. is kind of the direction of the Jim Beam distillery, right? Uh, sh- yes, the Bur- the Booker No distillery. The, the Booker No distillery, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then to our east would be closer to like Loretto. And Maker's Mark. And Maker's Mark. So yeah. you're right in in between the God's two. country, let's just say. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, For several a, reasons. They got an abbey here. They did. <laughs> That's right. So, Lynn, let's, let's talk about it the history of Southern Nelson County. How many distilleries were here back before prohibition? There was about 11 in this general area. And it was, uh, you know, certainly my great, great grandfather, Joseph Washington had one over in Marion County. Uh, but my grandfather also had one here on the exact same property where we are. And, um, you know, one of our main objectives as a family to come back to this specific property was to give back to Southern Nelson County. Uh, this county supported and gave a lot to our family over the last couple centuries, really, and uh, has re- you know really hit an economic tough spot after Prohibition. Um, there were zero distilleries as of two two years ago in this part of Nelson County, and um, you know it's not an area that people would have selected to build a distillery. There's there's uh, the infrastructure um, was really lacking and. Uh, my cousin Wally, who's the visionary of all this, uh, really has been uh, supportive in you know putting in everything from sewers to you know upgrading uh, some of the the infrastructure in the in the township. So um, you know it's really neat to be able to support this community in a lot of ways, not just with the distillery. And with the distillery buildings that are on site that are part of your grandfather's original mm-hmm. distillery here, yes. Um, when was the last time that uh, whiskey came out of those buildings? So the the uh, distilleries were uh, sold, and I believe it was in the uh, early 60s was the last time there was any bourbon produced here. The rickhouses were around, and it was in the 70s, early 70s, um, where uh, I think probably the last couple cases were shipped off-site. So it's you know been half century pretty much since there's been any activity in the urban world on this property. So are there a lot of dance? Is it, is it a big family? Yes. Yes. So, uh, so Joseph Washington had, um, 10 children and, uh, from those 10 children, he had 53 grandchildren of which my grandfather was one. 
And uh, we just had a reunion with my gra- just my grandfather and grandmother's descendants uh, a couple summers ago, and it was 170 some odd of us. Wow! So, and that's just from one of the 53 grandchildren. So, so, so let me guess: future reunions will be held here. That is the plan. <laughs> I would think that so. is the plan and the frequent request. I will say absolutely. Yeah. What what a great heritage and and what a great sight to actually have those family members come and and teach their children about the legacy. Yeah, Jim, and you know, it's not, you know, just our family. We, we're we a pretty close family given our size, but um, that's really what we want to make this site is not just another distillery, but really a place to bring families and to be able to sit back with family and friends. And, you know, we're building a restaurant. I showed you guys where it'll be going. It's a 200 seat restaurant. Uh, we have an event center where future family reunions will be held. It's, uh, you know, 350 person capacity, you know, with eight top rounds. So, you know, just conference center could hold a lot more, but, uh, you know, we'll have that. We have the amphitheater that'll be done, uh, by the end of this summer, uh, outdoor, uh, seating, you know, 200 directly in front of it, but 2000, you know, in this general area, uh, the train will be able to bring folks here. So, you know, our, our, we have a 12 acre lake where folks will be able to fish. We stocked it with fish a couple months ago. Uh, so the fishing should be good. We have several B and B's in the area. So it's really, uh, certainly want to have a lot of nice whiskey pours for folks when they come on site, but we want it to be for families, really a place for families to be able to gather. Also noticed in the tasting room, you know, they got, you got some other stuff over there too, that for people that sure. don't like whiskey or they're not into whiskey yet, <clears throat> I noticed you had beer taps also. We do. We, uh, we, again, we want, uh it to be a place where all can gather. And certainly our preference would be that folks would have a pour of our our bourbon when they're here, but uh, certainly recognize that that's not everybody's, you know, beverage of choice. So we have a a fully stocked bar uh, in the tasting room, which will also serve the amphitheater for all of our outdoor events. Well, I really want to dive into some of that in the second half, but right now, Mike, I'd like to hear a little bit more about how, you and your cousin uh, and the rest of those involved in mm-hmm. this venture kind of got that spark, decided yeah, sure. to, to resurrect this business. I mean, you're you're actually going to be producing under DSP 47, right? Right. That's a very historical DSP number. Yes. The DSP 47, thanks for pointing that out, Jim, was my grandfather's DSP. And uh, we really had to work through some. Uh, shall we say red tape to to be able to get a historical DSP? You know they're in the twenty thousands right now uh, as far as DSP numbers go. But DSP Distilled Spirits Plant it's a license number that every distillery or you know, uh, beverage provider spirits provider has to have uh, in order to be able to do business in this country. And for us to be able to get my grandfather's you know DSP uh, was very special. So. Uh, as you can see, we're now selling T-shirts yeah, with, absolutely. with the DSP number on it. But um, but to ask answer your other question, Jim, on how we started. So um, really, you know, all kudos go to my cousin Wally, who I know you've met. Um, he, like a lot of the dance, uh, you know, at, at many a family reunion, we say, oh, it's a shame, you know, it got sold out of the the, the business got sold out of the family. Certainly my grandfather, when he distilled here, the oldest of his children, uh, Wallace, Wally's grandfather worked here and has lived, just lived on site down the hill, in the green roof house. Um, but the rest of, uh, Wallace's younger brothers, you know, they all, of course they, he had some sisters too, but they didn't, you know, work in the bourbon industry at that point, but the rest of them served either in Korea or world war two. And so we're kind of off, off around the world serving the country. And uh, so eventually, you know, as happened with a lot of distilleries, you know, man retires, no sons there to pick up the mantle. And so it got sold out of the the uh, the family. And so for many years, we also thought it'd be cool to get back into the business. And uh, and Wally has had a lot of success in the, uh, the healthcare business. Uh, and always kind of had that dream alive probably more than any of any of the first cousins um to the point that he uh he he lives in Nashville and he had a um liquor distribution business 
And uh, it was a, a fellow dis- distiller that said to him, Wally, you ought to really think about, you know, doing this yourself. You know, why, why just distribute it? You ought to make it. You, you know, you got the family history and it really planted a seed with him to the point that he came down here and started exploring if, you know, granddaddy's old land was available. And uh, right before that big family reunion a couple years ago, you know, he had, he had reached out to me and said, hey, you want to run a distillery? <laughs> And I said, sure, um, you know, with my background in, in uh, the chemical industry and distilling. And uh, our cousin Charles actually was working on site. And uh, Wally and I had not met Charles at that site, but he's become like a brother to us. And uh, so the three of us really have kind of worked together. Well, really, truthfully, Charles and I have worked with Wally to get this his vision off the ground. And it's just been a heck of a ride. So. I think that's a, it's just amazing when you drive out here and you can see when we were talking to you before about how you're taking care of preserving that history, like the water tower here. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a beautiful thing to see when you're driving up and that's how old is it? 60 years old? Uh, just about, I think for it goes back to the 30s. So a little bit over, older than that, closer to 80. 80 probably. years old. Yeah. It's still a beautiful part yeah. of history. And the Quonset huts that were the old bottling rooms. Right. <clears throat> you guys saved part of those mm-hmm. and made that into your tasting room. Um, I just, I love that, that you guys are taking care of that and preserving your history and bringing it back. So people understand, hey, the Dant family was a major player in Kentucky. Um, back 60 or 70 years ago. Yeah, and, certainly. And now you're here again. And what a great member to have on the team as an engineer um, at a distillery. Yeah, I think, well, it's it's fun because we all, uh, our family being as big as it is, we, we all have something to offer. I mean, Charles, that water tower wouldn't still be here if it wasn't for Charles. He really worked hard to make sure it was preserved. There's, uh, he, he talks about as he worked at the uh, trust factory that was on site uh, before uh, the land was purchased by Wally. Um, a lot of folks stopped by and wanted to scrap that thing and take the metal as scrap. But he was really a big advocate of making sure it stayed there. And, you know, thankfully, thank God, because now we are able to, you know, uh, just kind of restore it a little bit. I mean, it's still in very good structural uh, condition. Uh, my, you know, I have a cousin, John Dant, who's been an architect uh, for many years, and his firm, Dean and Dean, has done the design of all the buildings on site. Um, certainly, Wally, with all of his entrepreneurial and you know business acumen, um, has really just put together a really great team with family members and others. And uh, uh, yeah, it's it's been great to kind of live the dream with cousins. It's a unique experience. Yeah. Do you remember as a little kid or a teenager hearing about your family and, and knowing that, hey, we are a whiskey family? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I was talking with Jim right before the show. And I I think, you know, as a young dant, you kind of learn the alphabet, the numbers, and and that it takes 51% corn to make bourbon. <laughs> so <laughs> I think those were uh, early on facts that you learn. And, and just, um, you know, kind of hearing the stories and coming out here to new Haven and new hope Wally spent a lot of time out here as a, as a kid with his grandparents, my uncle over on the house growing up. And, and of course, Charles has spent his whole life out here. Um, I'm probably the three of us, well, certainly the one that spent the least amount of time, but, you know, certainly grew up hearing my dad and mom talk about new hope and new Haven and the country. And so, um, yeah, just special. Well, let me ask you, when was your first sip of whiskey? Do you remember that? Um, ain't nobody here to whoop you for that. I was going to say, I'd take the fifth on that one. (laughs) I may have been under 21, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, like, uh, probably college is when I remember, uh, making it a more common part of my beverage repertoire, shall we say. You'd be surprised how many people when they ask that question, they'd be like, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. And I'm like, you're a no now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's past the statute of limitations, yeah, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Mike, any uh, any last comments on this? Any any newly evolved tasting notes now that you've been sipping on it for about 20 minutes? It gets sweeter and sweeter as it sets in the glass. Uh, yeah. I do know that. Uh, that finish is coming out more, mm-hmm. sitting on my palate a little bit more. I, I 
you know, some other, they, I said, uh, stuff on the show stuff, stuff. Um, but I won't say stuff today. I, it, it still has that spice, that pop rocks you were talking about. At the same time, it keeps that kettle corn sweetness to it. And I, I like that. Yeah. And so I tend to agree with you. I think you probably couldn't have said it better. It does. It, sweetness does build over time with it. I'm also noticing that the rye is kind of uh, developing. The rye, the rye on it's developing a little bit. And I'm getting a little bit of that aromatic menthol off the rye. The kind of, uh, but just, just a little bit. But it's more of an aromatic, it's more of a menthol kind of airy. I really enjoy that. I like it a lot. And uh, the oak is not overpowering on it for a six year. It's just about right. That, 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 I would say the finish on this is medium to long. This is a perfect early spring where it's still kind of bitter cold outside or a late fall uh, to where you could football season, it's chill in the air. Um, this will warm me right up. Yeah. That is a nice vision right there, Mike. I like that. <laughs> Early fall football season. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break here, pay homage to our, our supporters, and uh, we'll, we'll continue sipping on uh, this six-year bourbon. And when we come back, you've got some more expressions for us. Sure. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about what's going on and what's what's in the future. Sound good? Great. Sounds right. great. Thanks. Well, you know, you can't drink whiskey without glassware. And Mike and I are extremely pleased to have a sponsor like Premium Bar Products. Premium Bar Products offers direct-to-consumer the finest whiskey glasses, cocktail glasses, and bar tools with your own personal engraving. I mean, you can write anything you want on these glasses. Anything from a company logo to a personal statement and there are no minimum orders. Their direct consumer platform offers you the opportunity to purchase small quantities of your favorite glass shapes that enhance the pleasure of enjoyment and drinking a whiskey and make it all very positive. They offer the absolute finest trending and handmade glasses as well as a comprehensive range of styles and all of their items have been designed with purpose, practicality, and longevity in mind. So if you're a bourbon or whiskey group and you need custom logos, you need to reach out to Premium Bar Products. If you're an individual, you just want a few for your bar to impress your friends, to give out as gifts, you need to call Premium Bar Products. They need to be your one and only source for custom glassware. I can tell you right now, the Bourbon Road, that's who we use. Janie and Carson and the team there at Premium Bar Products will take care of you. They'll treat you like family, and they'll take care of you with every order. So, listeners, we are back. We're down here in Gethsemane, Kentucky uh, at Log Steel Distillery, and we still have Lynn in here with us, DSP 47. She's rocking their T-shirt, um, the engineering uh, mastermind behind the distillery, I guess. Well, maybe the the, the distillation part of it. (laughs) Well, that would be the engineering part, right? There you go. So in the first half, we had your six-year-old bourbon, Mm -hmm. uh, your Monk's Road bourbon. And uh, I have to say, very nice. Job well done. Thank you. Uh, That's definitely a bottle. If you're coming here to visit the distillery, you're going to come to the gift shop. That's a bottle to leave with, no doubt. That's my recommendation. What about yours, Mike? Yeah, I definitely pick up a bottle, help the... The Dant family uh, resurrect this place. They're already going to have it resurrected, but probably somebody needs to be paying the bills. Yeah. So to start off the second half, you have poured a wee Glen Cairn for us. That's right. Uh, but this is special stuff. You pulled out a bottle, and this is something that I didn't see uh, readily apparent in the tasting room. Correct. Okay. So yeah. what do we have? So this is our uh, eight-year limited release rattle and snap, which will be available in bottles in the fall. Okay. Uh, and it is, uh, rattle and snap is our second brand that we will be releasing. Obviously, Monk's Road, we talked about in the first half. Uh, that's more kind of our premier bourbon line. But rattle and snap is a, a brand that uh, we're going to have a little bit more fun with, play around with. We will have a line of Tennessee whiskeys, um, uh, a base offering, and then this is a, a sample of our limited release eight-year Tennessee whiskey. 
Um, and then we'll also have some uh, liquor infused bourbons, honey flavors, etc. Uh, but rattle and snap goes back to the kind of the uh, 1800s game of chance. It was a dice game, not dissimilar from craps um, and really kind of speaks to, you know, the experimental fun side that we are planning on having here on the distillery. We'll, we'll play around with several uh, different mash bills and probably some, some of those will come out under the rattle and snap label, but we'll certainly have some base Tennessee whiskeys using the Lincoln County process. And what you have in front of you is uh, one of our first releases again, available in the fall. That's a eight year. All right, let's check it out. I can almost tell now that this is a, that Lincoln County process, that Tennessee whiskey, a little bit sweeter of a nose. Almost a honey, honey tea. Yeah, it's it's subdued. It's not uh, it's not overly aggressive. It doesn't um, attack the nose. It's very light and very um, subtle. I think it's probably a good word for it. Honey and tea, you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that's probably a good one. Honey and tea. You know, I'm a nut on my honey, so yeah. (laughs) I'm ready to taste it. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. That's really nice. It's got a little bit of a kind of a mineral note to it, but um, oh, what is that? I'm trying to come up with it up front. What is that? I'm actually. It has a little bit of spice to it, not a, just a, almost that white pepper spice, and it just kind of flows across your palate. That sweetness of the honey's there for me. That maybe that tea, you know, that some tea you get a little bit of spice with. It's um, like an herbal tea, though. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Uh, chamomile. Chamomile. Yeah. You might you might be right on it there. I was trying to come up with what that is, but that 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 that's sort of a spicy. But this is not like a this is not a fire spice. This is more of like a a potpourri spice guy. Yeah, that kind of just warm warms yeah, you up a little yeah. bit. I, that's pretty dang good, that Lincoln County process. You know how you say you know how you say all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. Yeah. That's right. So all Tennessee whiskey is bourbon, but all bourbon is Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> it works the same way, right? <laughs> well that, that that's a good saying, Jim. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I, I really like true. that. Well that's nice. Eight year. It's a little bit more aged, um, but like you said, it's got softer notes. It kind of rounded that that spice off a little bit and just gives that that chamomile tea honey um warming effect to it. Yeah. That's uh yeah, there's really no bittering effect on the back end of this at all. Um it's more of a mid palate bourbon for me. Um it's got a nice finish on it, uh, but it's um uh, it's it's a little more subtle. It's a little more subtle. Just like the nose was subtle, the finish on this is subtle. Pleasing, nice. But not, uh, I mean, I get a big hug. Hmm. Are you? No, not at all. Like none, almost. No hug. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, nope. Um, I would <laughs> almost think that this, it, it could have been a weeded bourbon, almost, because um, it's got those softer notes to it. Um, and if, if somebody was a weeded bourbon drinker, this would probably be right up their alley for uh, from, from Log Steel Distillery. Well, that's really beautiful, and I personally, I can't wait till fall to be able to lay my hands on a bottle of that. It's nice to have an early taste. I think we can uh, file that one away in memory, and when we come back in the fall, we'll make sure to grab a bottle yeah, of it. Please do, and just to be clear, this so we'll have the eight-year limited release, but we'll also have our standard uh, Rattle and Snap Tennessee whiskey, uh, as well as a couple uh, honey-infused versions, so... Be a, a, an additional product line to look forward to in the pro- fall. You know, maybe the Bourbon Road guys would get a special honey one that's cast strength honey. Cast strength honey. Yeah, yeah, that that'd be really good. If we I all keep in touch and we'll see that. what we can do for you. <laughs> <laughs> so when we when we came in this morning, uh, I should say when we came in uh-huh. this afternoon, uh, we entered into your. Um, into your tasting room and you've got a i don't know if you call it kind of you said it's a scaling system or a prototyping system that you use yeah so it's a 50 gallon mini still it's a hybrid pot column still and 
I call it our playground. Okay. So uh, it's obviously our official distillery that we got our DSP off of. Uh, certainly we'll be building a much larger distillery uh, just to the northwest corner of that mini still. Uh, but it's really, you know, going to give us uh, a very unique opportunity that you don't have in the industry to really play around with a lot of different mash bills. We play in with malts and heirloom varieties and, um, you know, we'll age everything in a 15 gallon barrel, which, uh, you know, has kind of the same surface area volume ratio as a standard 53 gallon bourbon barrel, but it ages much quicker in a, in a smaller barrel to age, uh, you know, 18 to 24 months. And so, um, you know, certainly it won't be something that we use to produce on a large scale, but it'll give us directionally the ability to say, yeah, we like this heirloom variety of corn, or, you know, we want to play with this kind of malt and, you know, we're playing around with different toasts and char on kind of a small scale level. Um, you know, I worked in the chemical industry for a long time and, you know, work with large, um, you know, chemical reactors. And in that process, you know, you have lab, lab bench scale, then kind of a, a pilot scale and then a kind of intermediate scale. And this is really our pilot scale sure. distillery uh, is how to think of it. So you're, you're going to produce these barrels, these 15 mm-hmm. gallon barrels. This is not how you plan on producing whiskey when you're up to thousands of barrels a year or right. many thousands of barrels a year. But for the moment, this helps you to narrow down your process, narrow down your recipes, try mm-hmm. to make a determination of what your still is installed, what you're going to do. Sure. In addition to that, you guys have, have entered into some contract distilling, have you not? Yes, we have. So obviously, you know, our first uh, bourbon release is a six year and we certainly still don't have our column still done. So we have done, uh, some contracting, uh, but we also, we have a, you know, the dance have always been a high rye kind of bottled and bond bourbon is where our family history lies. And so, uh, we have a very, um, specific initial mash bill with proprietary yeast that we know we'll start with. Uh, and we've already, um, done some, um, contract distillation through some local distilleries. Uh, and we have a, a, a two year new make and a one year new make aging in local brick houses. So we'll actually, you know, go from this fifth district series to, you know, our mash bill, just not produced here to, um, eventually our, our own mash bill produced and are still here. So when we did come in, Jim, I noticed there's a red bearded wizard over there crafting up some magic right now in that little mini still. Tight-lipped, red-bearded wizard. He was. We were trying to pull that that potion out of him and see what was going on there. He didn't want to say, though. Yep. Chad is uh, our uh, first distilling employee and has uh, done a, a great job for us, uh, but knows that, you know, he knows which variables I'm having him play with right now, and he's not going to tell you which one – which one of these varying on what, but, uh, you know, again, we're controlling for a lot of different variables, whether it's the way we add the, the grain or, um, you know, the type of small barrel we put it in or temperatures that we're running at, uh, he, he knows how we want to try things out and he's a, he's a great distiller. Well, now he's got a nickname, the red bearded wizard. (laughs) <laughs> all right i'll tell him that <laughs> we gotta get a name tag for his shirt yeah. <laughs> well tomorrow's a really big day for you guys pretty important day uh yeah. let's sort of frame that a little bit so pe- just in case people so this episode will release on wednesday and tomorrow is tuesday yeah so, so if you miss the grand opening by one day if yeah you so if you're listening to this episode right now yesterday was the grand opening Right. That is correct. So our first uh, uh, tastings to the public is starting tomorrow, Tuesday, May 18th. You can get on our website, www.logstill.com, logstilldistillery.com, and uh, make your reservations. And uh, we have some bourbon specialists that will educate you on our our product, give you a, a virtual tour of the site, and uh, can have a little taste of that Monk's Road that, that Mike and Jim like so much. All right. Yeah, it's not that far of a drive. If you're already in Bardstown, you're listening to us. You're on the Bourbon Road out there searching for other things we've talked about. 10, 15 minutes down the road, 
get online, set up that tasting, come on down here and check out this place. Uh, you will be amazed at what they have going on. A lot of construction, like you said before, right, Jim? Yeah, but it's it's great to see. I mean, if you come into this place right now, you're going to see, uh, you're going to see a place that is uh, is being set up for the future. I mean, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of buildings uh, being being built right now. There's a lot of construction going on. You can sort of see the lay of the of the land here as they start to raise the buildings and everything. But the tasting room and uh, the distillery, at least the pilot plant distillery, mm -hmm. is uh, is complete. It's yes. ready for guests. It is indeed. We had uh, some soft opening events this past week uh, with family and friends. Uh, we had our big ribbon cutting. The governor of Kentucky, Andy Bashir, was here with uh, local mayors, um, Dick Heaton of Bardstown and Tessie Cecil of New Haven. And, you know, we've just really had a lot of support locally, which we're very grateful for. Um, and, you know, the, the public will be able to come in and taste the bourbon starting Tuesday, the 18th. So how big is the campus? It's about 300 plus acres. Okay. Yeah. So you pointed to a, to off yonder in the distance, yes. uh, a bed and breakfast. Yeah, so we have uh, two bed and breakfasts that are open now. There's a more traditional one, uh, a larger home we call the homestead uh, that has uh, five rooms. And then we have a cottage um, that uh, has its own kind of standalone units with uh, each of them have their own little kitchenette that's right on the 12 acre lake. Uh, and there's uh, so there's going to be a road that runs through. There'll be a road. Uh, so we're on D head road and then there's a private road, Dant head road, which is a nod back to the Danton head distillery. That was my grandfather and uh, another gentleman, Mr. Head. Um, so there will be the Dant head road that will lead um, past our amphitheater. And uh, we'll have a train depot down there where folks can get off the, the train and come visit the site. Uh, and it winds around to the event venue, which is a 350 person event venue uh, with another B and B on that side of campus. Now, Lynn, will all this be done by the uh, Bourbon Festival? That is in what's the dates for that this year? Awkward. In, in third week in September or so. Yeah, so we will. Uh, we have two of the B and Bs um, are ready. I think we'll have a third one actually on this side of campus on the east side of D head road that y'all haven't seen. Um, and the amphitheater will be ready by then the uh, distillery and the restaurant and the event venue will be um, still under construction at that point. And what about those little cottages you were talking about? The, the cottages are open now. They are open. Yes. So do you know if they're all booked up for that? I do not know that that would be our head of hospitality. That would know that, uh, but certainly you can go on the website. So um, also, uh, you know, New Haven has the, the railway museum mm -hmm. and they're going to be running, as you said, they're going to be running to a rail stop here on the property. Yes. Uh, when will all that start? The, tr the train depot, um, it should be ready, uh, I think, late fall. Okay. And so as soon as that, you know, when the governor came for the ribbon cutting, we rode in from the railway museum, but we had to have a temporary platform uh that the museum furnished for us uh, but certainly you know safety of our vis visitors and guests is of primary importance so the the train station where f folks can uh disembark from should be ready by late fall i'm not i'll have to check on that one for you guys to see if it will be ready by the uh september date i think you know late fall down here it'd just be stunning because when you look out the tasting room and you look south of here, you just see this large vista and the hills, kind of rolling hills in the background. And it's all green right now. But in the fall, the leaves here will just be popping. It is beautiful. It really is God's country around here. And it just as it's beautiful to see all the greenery and the, and the trees kind of come alive with spring, it's just as beautiful to see it in the fall. So hopefully we get some good color this year. Well, then you got one more uh, special pour for us here. Um, yes. What do you What do you got for us? This is our barrel finished gin. We have uh, it's Monks Road product line. We have two gins currently available. One is a more standard dry gin uh, that has a really unique botanical mix. A uh, little bit more have high on the citrus, uh, kind of fruity side botanicals. Whereas the barrel finished, we're getting ready. 
to taste right now is more of a juniper forward uh, botanical mix. Uh, got some some a little bit of a spice in there. I won't lead you too much. We'll see what you, what you guys pick up on. But it's it's uh, finishing a um, a bourbon barrel for six months. So is the barrel finished gin more along the lines of a London Dry that's been barrel finished? Um, for, probably as far as the pure botanical mix. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to try. So we're supposed to try and identify the other botanical. Is that right? See if you can, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll give it my best shot. You I'm going to let you do this, Jim. Jen, a- Jen is my other bourbon. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Oh, that's nice. It's really soft. Buttery. Mm-hmm. Very buttery. It's got a little bit of juniper berry to it. Yeah. That spice, I think that's what I'm getting. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what that other botanical is. It's not real citrusy, though. I don't get it. Do you? I do. I get a little bit of like tangerine on this um, citrus. The citrus is not as forward in this one as it is in our dry gin, but there is a little bit in here. Maybe that's where I'm getting that like that orange instead of like a lemon zest or something. Yeah, I wish I could nail it and impress everybody, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. <laughs> well, I would encourage your listeners to see if they can get okay. you to the punch there. But there, yeah, there's certainly a little bit of spice and a little bit of dried fruit in there as well. Now, in the future, Lynn, uh, besides the two gins and the high rye bourbon, mm-hmm. are you guys going to have a rye whiskey? We will have a rye whiskey. We will also have a weeded. Uh, you are going to have yes, a weeded. Yes, we will have a weeded bourbon as well. So, Oh, you just you warmed to, my heart. I would say you need to come back and visit us soon, Mike. I might start crying right now. I tell you what, <laughs> you, the first distillery say that, Jim. I, I am so proud of them. Man. Yeah, like I said, we, um, you know, certainly, um, I think my cousin Wally, when the, the governor was here and we did our ribbon cutting, talked about standing on the shoulders of giants. And, and you know, we really do feel like, given the family history that we have, that, um there's a lot to, um, you know, come up to uh, as far as what we offer, but we really want to kind of create a blend. And I think Jim, you said it in the in the first half, but really, you know, have a re- sense of respect for our forefathers and the legacy that they've created for our family, for the Dant family, but also really kind of take it the next step, right, and be innovative and play around with some some new mash bills, certainly high rye, like I said, is very traditional in the family and something we will stick with, but certainly won't be the only type of, of bourbon we offer here. Well, it's nice because somebody's going to, you know, most people go to the distillery, they stay a couple hours, they take a couple of pours, they buy their bottle, they go home, right? But here, you're going to be able to come here, stay here, eat here, enjoy the grounds. You had fishing. Um, see a show. See a show. What we'll kind of, Stuff could we expect at the amphitheater? Well, you know, Wally lives in Nashville and certainly uh, has a strong connection to the country music industry. Uh, so we're hoping to get some, you know, good good touch of country. Uh, certainly we have some, even some of our employees, you know, pick a little bluegrass here and there. Um, and so we hope to have a variety of acts. And, and really, again, it's all about family for us, family and friends, and being able to come and kind of sit back and relax and you know oh have, tell me you don't have a fire pit we do have a fire oh my pit. gosh it's branded actually we have a, a local craftsman a uh, good friend of charles I, i'm sorry i don't know his name offhand but uh if you drive over behind the homestead we have a nice fire pit and actually a bunch of us sat out there the other night and had some nice bourbon by the fire and you can kind of see the monks road and log still logos come through and Yes, we, we try to think oh of it all. Train ride in, bed and breakfast, good food, restaurant here on site, drink some whiskey, kick back by the fire, listen to some country music. This is a destination. That's uh, glad to hear you say that. That is really what we're going for. So, and what kind of food do you know? What kind of food your guys are going to have at the restaurant? Uh, you know, uh, we haven't nailed down the the menu, but I know. Um, Wally's quite the chef 
and has some good country, you know, greens infused hams and, and family recipes um, that will have so some very traditional, you know, Southern American cuisine, um, but not like other, you know, the other part of our distillery will probably play around and try to have some innovative dishes. We, um, you know, Charles and Wally are both big gardeners. We already had a whole season of vegetables that, uh, you know, we got some salsa and tomatoes and all kinds of things, you know, bread and butter pickles canning over and, in one of the old B and B's or the B and B's to be, um, down in the down in the basement, um, aging, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of kind of farm to table um, salads and vegetable dishes uh, offered there as well. I, I just can imagine in my mind, right? Saying destination, we, we ride into the train with our wives. We come down there. We wake up that morning. You know what I like to have in the morning, right? With my breakfast, Jim, mm-hmm. a bourbon mimosa. Yeah. This Mox Road would be perfect in that. Yeah. Um, with my breakfast, have well, dinner here, listen to some music, like you said, maybe even get set around the uh, old fire pit with the Dant family. Yeah. Well, right now, you know, many of the many of the distilleries are still uh, closed to the public. You know, everybody's still taking it slow, trying mm-hmm. to adjust to the changing times. You know, just recently, we've had the mask mandate lifted. Uh, Kentucky's following suit here shortly. And uh, we, per- we we expect things next six to eight weeks to open up in Kentucky. But right now, you guys are opening tomorrow. Yes. And, you know, I mentioned uh, encourage your listeners to go on to www.logstilldistillery.com. Um, that is really kind of how we're managing the the crowd size in the tasting room. Um, you know, we are still very much aware of the, you know, restrictions on percent of capacity. And so we have limited our reservations specifically to allow that, you know, hopefully. So walk-ins discouraged for the moment. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, interesting. We already have, you know, a pretty decent size uh, uh, capacity. I'll say that we are percent of capacity that we're hitting uh, for this first week, certainly. But, uh, you know, until until things are a little bit more settled down on the, the pandemic side and things are truly open uh, and things are, quote, unquote, back to normal, uh, you know, we are going to kind of manage the flow of traffic uh, using our website and, and reservations. You, you, you can, you know, certainly stop in and walk walk up, but, uh, you know, obviously the priority will be given sure. to those who make well, reservations. Well, cur- currently, Kentucky, I think the, the current promise from the governor is that on June 11th, we go back to 100% capacity. I think that's the... That's a, uh, that is my understanding. I'm not sure, uh, you know, how, what the, all the milestones that we have to meet to be able to do that on June 11th, yeah. but, uh, certainly we're up to 60% and that was, uh, welcome news. Sure. Absolutely. So are you guys also, uh, on social media? Uh, we are, we are on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Twitter, I believe I'm not sure we have a TikTok feed yet. <laughs> in all those places, it's uh, Log Still Distillery. Log Still Distillery, and also uh, DantCrossing.com is what we're calling the larger campus. So to make reservations at the B and Bs, you should go to DantCrossing.com. Okay, uh, and you sh- can uh, certainly find all the B and B openings there. So uh, on LogStillDistillery.com, mm-hmm. I guess, and DantCrossing.com, yes. they both link to each other. Yes. So that if you get to one, you'll see links for the other one. Yes. Okay, that's great. Well, we Lynn, we really appreciate having you on the show today. We we love the invitation down here. We it's so great to see something that is uh, a vision that is coming to fruition. Well, thank you so much. We I loved having you guys, Mike and Jim, and I really hope you'll be back, especially Mike for our weeded offerings and and both of you guys bring your families and we'll sit out and by the fire pit and have a pour. That's awesome. And Mike, where can people find us on social media? So you can find us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I, I don't know. All these other ones. YouTube. YouTube, YouTube all that stuff. Right? We're, we're not on LinkedIn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're on everything else. So you can find us on those. Check out our photos. Check out our posts. We try to post once a day. On Facebook, we also have a private Facebook group called the Bourbon Roadies. Got three questions you got to ask to join that. Uh, are you 21? Do you like bourbon? 
yes, everybody likes bourbon. You just don't know it yet um, until you've had this Monk's Road. Once, you, once you've had that, you're going to love some bourbon. And then do you agree to play nice because we don't tolerate any what, Jim? No rudeness allowed. Yeah. So what that means is if somebody wants to post up a bottle of this Monk's Road right here, we want to be able to post that up, tell their tasting notes, and share with our uh, other listeners out there what they think of it. So let them do that. Uh, without c- without no bourbon sharks coming out and, and chopping them off at the knees. Right? Yeah, we don't we don't like that in that group. So 1,700 <laughs> members strong in there. I actually think Wally's a bourbon roadie. Check that out. Join that group. We do giveaways in there. Um, a lot of people sharing some whiskey in there. Um there are master distillers in there, distillery owners, musicians, chefs. There is uh, the walk of life in there. And people post photos like retirements, uh, births, celebrations of life. That's what we like to see. Uh, whiskeys from around the world are in there. People are buying them. Other stuff like gins, too. Um, people will put stuff up there like that, like this Monk's Roach gin. Absolutely. So let's see those photos. Join that group. If you're a roadie, you also get. How much off our 10%, 10%, one tenth off. Now, where do they find our swag at Jim? So the bourbon is our, is our website. And on that website, you'll find in addition to our swag, you'll also find articles written by Mike to, and Adam and every now and then me, but not too often. I'm not much of a writer. I'm more of a editor kind of guy, <laughs> but, uh, you'll, you'll find uh, our articles on there. You also find our swag, uh, glasses, shirts hats all kinds of great stuff we'd love to have you check it out we also do two shows a week right mike two shows a week we do a craft distillery on mondays a review of it it's just me and jim on there we talk about the whiskey talk about our notes what we think every once in a while we'll throw in a big boy big boy distillery on there but most of the time we're trying to lift up the craft distillery movement across the United States, across the world. We want to have those those uh, those folks on there. We also have our long segment. We have great guests like Lynn Dant on. It's about an hour long. Enough for your car ride to work. Kind of a deep home. dive, right? Yeah. And we've definitely did a deep dive on this Monk's Road uh, bourbon and their gin. You want to check that out. Make sure you pick up a bottle. Um, it, it'll help you kind of figure out your bourbon road. Absolutely. So both shows, we'd love to have you listen to them every week. Uh, in, in the meantime, if you have an idea for a show, you have an idea for a bottle that we need to review, a person we should have on, we encourage you to reach out to Mike and I. You can always find me on Instagram at jshannon63. I'm one big chief. And we will see you down the bourbon road. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.